Well, just when you thought Star Wars couldn't get any more dead under Disney's guardianship, they found another box of nails to drive into an already buried coffin. Come on, man. What are we talking about? After announcing a new Ray movie, Disney subsequently let the world know that it would be helmed by feminist independent filmmaker Charmaine Obeyed Shinoy, who once said back in 2015 that I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable and recognize that I am working to bring something that makes you uncomfortable, and it should make you uncomfortable, because you need to change your attitude. And in a recent WTF moment in an interview with CNN, Charmaine had this to add. I think uh, it's about time that we had a woman uh, come forward uh, to shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. Oh, shut up. Well, folks, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video, not yet subscribed to this channel, please take a moment and turn that little red subscribe button to gray. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. Share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment before you head out the door today. Make sure to join us every Sunday afternoon right here on Valiant Renegade at 6 p.m. Eastern. For the live show. Well, stupid is as stupid does. And the reaction from the Star Wars fan community was about what you would expect after such silly remarks from the director of the upcoming new theatrical release. Now, I want to remind folks about this movie that is going to feature Rey as the main character, a follow-up to the failed Disney sequel trilogy from several years ago. And that is that it was right here, Valiant Renegade and our friend WDW Pro, who first brought the news to you many months ago that Bob Iger, once he returned to Disney back in late 2022, was headlining an initiative to get Star Wars back into theaters and that he wanted to take another crack at the whole Ray Palpatine idea. And sure enough, just a few months later at Star Wars Celebration in early 2023, Daisy Ridley was marched out onto the stage along with Kathleen Kennedy to announce exactly that. If you're already thinking that's probably bad enough, well, wait, it actually gets worse. See, Disney seems incredibly hell-bent on driving this franchise deeper into its gravesite because nothing is going to do better in a theatrical release than another Ray movie. <laughs> But when Disney announced who the director for this film would be, it got even more laughable. See, we all remember the recent comments from Bob Iger about wanting to, quote, quiet the noise. And he's even made comments in recent weeks and months about how, well, the creatives just got too far away from good storytelling. They maybe put politics above and beyond the good storytelling, and they need to get the creatives back to just good storytelling. Well, nothing is going to accomplish that goal better than hiring somebody like Miss Obeyed Shinoy, who, again, is a self-proclaimed feminist who likes to make men uncomfortable with her movies. From Forbes magazine this week, upcoming Star Wars film Attacked is woke by right-wing critics over director's feminist comments. Obey Janoy told CNN in a televised interview this week that it's, quote, about time we had a woman come forward to shape the story of Star Wars in a galaxy far, far away, adding she's thrilled about the upcoming project. She's a filmmaker known for directing feminist documentaries and was announced in April 2023 as director of an upcoming unnamed film set in the, quote, Star Wars universe. I just think it's funny how they have Star Wars in quotes there because it's not really Star Wars. Obey Chinoy will be the first woman and the first person of color to direct a film set in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> what has that got to do with anything? Chief critics, conservative pundits criticized Obey Chinoy's comments, including Benny Johnson, who claimed the Star Wars franchise is doomed. I thoroughly disagree with Benny on that when the Star Wars franchise was doomed years ago. Pundit Matt Walsh posted a video of Obey Chinoy's Women in the World Summit interview stating the film is, quote, destined to be Disney's biggest flop yet. I like to 
make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. It's like they enjoy losing money, the popular right-wing account Libs of TikTok posted in response to Walsh. Conservative personality Ben Shapiro called Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy the worst entertainment executive of my lifetime. All of those subsequent comments to Benny's I thoroughly agree with. Kennedy has faced online criticism and even a skewering on South Park. Will you please just look and make sure Kathy Kennedy isn't under my bed? Put another gay diverse woman in it. Make it my f***ing name. Because of speculation, she is pushing for more inclusive content at Disney. Though the Hollywood Reporter noted some criticism may be misattributed because she is, quote, not in charge of Disney's overall slate or considered the mastermind behind the company's so-called woke push. Let's dispel the myths right now. She may not be the mastermind behind Disney's at-large DEI ESG representation initiative that we've discussed many times here on Valiant Renegade, but she is a big cog on that wheel. Some critics like Libs of TikTok have claimed that film studios, particularly Disney, are, quote, losing money because of films containing, quote, woke content like feminist or LGBTQ themes, though some of the films attacked by conservatives in recent months have been profitable. Disney's The Little Mermaid remake faced attacks from conservatives for casting Halle Bailey, a black actress, as the character who is white in the animated original. But the film grossed about 500 170 million worldwide. So it lost money. That's according to a number crunched by prominent YouTuber Valiant Renegade. The film cost at least $250 million that we are so far aware, but pretty sure that once we get the final financial returns filed in the UK for it, we're going to find that price tag is going to go even a bit higher. And then, of course, that doesn't include at least $100 to $150 million in global marketing for that film, putting the total cost to Disney somewhere between $350 and $400 million. That means the movie in theaters would have needed to gross about seven to eight hundred million dollars, depending on where that final tally is, just to break even. So at five hundred and seventy million dollars, it unquestionably lost money. Disney's Elemental also sparked controversy for featuring a non-binary character, but went on to gross nearly five hundred million worldwide. Again, understanding how the box office works, no, Elemental, even though it had a better leg out than we initially anticipated, still did not cross a break-even threshold. At $500 million, that means about 250 or less made it back to the Walt Disney Company. And of that, the movie itself cost about $200 million to produce. And that doesn't, of course, include any marketing for the film, which would have been about another $100 million. So in all likelihood, Disney probably lost somewhere around $50 million in their total investment and marketing spend from what that movie made. Now, they also mentioned Barbie in here, saying that it also angered some conservative pundits who felt the film contained an emasculating portrayal of men. But the film became the highest grossing film of 2023 with $1.4 billion in total worldwide box office sales. Well, no, that film didn't really appeal to men, but it wasn't intended to appeal to men. It was intended to appeal to women that wanted to go see as many of our friends on YouTube have been guests on our show and told us they enjoyed it because it was a very girly movie. It hit its target audience. The same cannot be said for the Walt Disney Company. The Little Mermaid should have been competing, quite frankly, with Barbie for the top spot. But what's funny to me is I read articles like this and listen to statements by Miss Obey Chinoy. It seems like like, this has never happened before, right? We have never seen this in the history of Star Wars. We've never had women running Star Wars, except for the fact that we've had women running Star Wars for the last 10 years. Kathleen Kennedy and the infamous The Force is Female image. People that are still there now, in addition to Kennedy, people like Carrie Beck, these are the people that have been largely involved in Star Wars, leading it away from the very beginning from its original core audience that was primarily, but not exclusively, men. No, we had to have a new direction for Star Wars as early as 2012 when the movies were being mapped out. 
And instead of having a male hero, instead of going back to Luke Skywalker and the original cast that made Star Wars what Star Wars was, which made it worth the four plus billion dollars the Walt Disney Company paid to acquire it. No, we had to go in a new direction. We had to have a female hero in Star Wars. We had to have Rey, which became one of the biggest Mary Sues in cinematic history. And now we're going to go back to that well to see how it doesn't work again. If only there was some roadmap to this point that we could look back at in recent years, even something that Disney may have done with a major piece of franchise intellectual property. I don't know, something that may have been handed to another independent director or an indie filmmaker that was female and having given her maybe 200 to 300 million dollars to make a film and see how that turns out if only we had an example of something like that that had happened in the past oh yeah i forgot for all of the lip service of bob Iger about wanting to quiet the noise and get back to good storytelling and ergo profitability for these major multi-billion dollar capital investments of intellectual property that he, Bob Iger, has bought for Disney over the course of the last 10 to 15 years, it doesn't seem like much is changing. Why have a director like this? Forget the fact that she's a woman or that she's a person of color. Let's just examine the fact that her entire slate to this point has been small independent films and documentaries. Nothing near to the scope or scale or style of a major 300 plus million dollar Star Wars investment for a theatrical release. This is bonkers. And sure, men can screw this up just as easily as women. <laughs> but one has to wonder when you have a guy like John Favreau sitting right there in front of you, why wouldn't you use him? Is it a choice of, well, you don't want to use him because you want to have a person of color who is a woman directing this film to make a statement? Or is it maybe because John Favreau has kind of pieced out and he doesn't want to have someone maybe looking over his shoulder like Kathleen Kennedy trying to put together a film? Or maybe John Favreau simply doesn't want to play in a Ray Palpatine sandbox. Either way, Disney continues to make piss poor decisions when it comes to major intellectual properties and then invests hundreds of millions, nay, billions of dollars into these things over the course of several years for them to have Nothing but failure after failure after failure after failure when they reach the box office. And if Star Wars wasn't already dead and buried, it will be after this Ray movie. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.